Welcome back to IAS Tech. In today's tutorial, we are diving into Suspense in Next.js. Suspense is a powerful feature that allows you to create more dynamic and responsive user interfaces by handling asynchronous operations more elegantly. By the end of this video, you will understand what Suspense is and why it's useful and how to implement it in your Next.js applications. Suspense is a React feature that lets you declaratively specify loading states for parts of your component tree. In Next.js 14 and later, Suspense is deeply integrated, allowing you more granular loading states and improved user experiences. There are some key benefits of using Suspense that includes better handling of loading state, improved perceived performance, more predictable code structure for asynchronous operations. Let's start with a basic example of how Suspense works in Next.js. So in this example code, we are wrapping our product list component with Suspense. The fallback prop specifies what to show while the content is loading. This creates a clear separation between the loading state and actual content. Before we dive deeper, let's set up a new Next.js project that uses the app router which has better support for Suspense. First. Create a new Next.js project if you don't have it already. In order to create a new Next.js project, you have to run this command npx create next app and add space and your project name like this. Press enter and this will create a new project under that specific folder that you have specified. Once project is created, you have to go to that folder and open it in your favorite editor. I already have installed my Next.js project, so I will be using this one. Now let's create a simple app structure. So, so in the app directory, first of all, make sure you have the page.tsx file. Okay. And now we need to create a products page inside the products slash page.tsx. Next, we need to create few components. First one would be the component slash product list.tsx and second one would be loading.tsx okay now let's start with the main page here first of all we have added the welcome message in the h1 tag and then i will add a link tag make sure that link component is imported from the next slash link and now add a space here href and here we will specify the path of our page products and the text would be view products save it okay so this is how it is looking right now so this creates a simple home page with a link to our products page now let's implement suspense in our products page so go to the page.tsx in the products folder and let's create a function component export default function products and now we have to return our div Within that div, I will return h1 tag and our products. And then we need suspense component. Make sure to import it from the React. And you have to pass the fallback probe like this. And then you need to pass the loading component. As we already have created the loading file, let's create a basic loading component in that file and export it like this. And now save it. And now let's import that loading component. If you don't have the loading component, you can directly add the content for the loading here like this. Otherwise, the better approach is use the component directly here. Okay. All right. Now within the suspense component, pass the component that you want to display. We want to display the product list here. You can use any other content as well. So we have to create the component in the product list component and export it. Okay. So save it and let's import it product list. Okay. Product list has been imported. Save it here. We are using suspense to wrap our product list component while product list is loading. The loading component will be displayed. Now let's go to the product list .tsx file and complete the logic here as this is just an example. So we will not be hitting the actual backend API. I will just simulate that behavior by using a wait. So make sure to add async before the function name so that 
we could use the await keyword new promise resolve set timeout and within that we will pass the resolve 2000 okay so basically it will wait for two seconds and as soon as that time finish it will automatically call the resolve function that will complete this promise or resolve it so and as soon as this promise is resolved it will continue the execution below this line because we are using a wait it will wait until this promise is resolved okay so here i will return here we will add some dummy data like this and i'm going to remove this part by the way uh, this should go into another function that the function name would be async function fetch products paste this okay now let's create a constant in our component product list const products is equal to await fetch products and then return ul tag within that we will use the map function on the products array to display the list of the products we are showing the product dot name okay so in this product list component we are simulating an asynchronous data fetch in a real application this would be an api call or database query okay now let's test it so here click on the view products you can see a loading message is there but after some time the actual list of the products became visible you can see whenever i load it reload it it doesn't show the data it shows the content from the loading component and once the response is received or once it is ready it will show the actual content that we want to display now let's talk about the nested suspense boundaries suspense becomes even more powerful when you nest boundaries this allows for more granular loading states so let's modify our page.tsx in the products folder and within that i will add another suspense like this and between that i will pass the product count component that we will create shor shortly okay and also let's pass the fallback and this time i'm not going to use the loading component i will just show you how to add uh, content directly here without using a component p loading count save it all right now let's create another component that will work in the same way so i will basically duplicate this file and give it the name product count and here you can return any random whole numbers so return okay this will be returning the whole numbers randomly every time we call this and let me rename it to get total numbers okay and total numbers product count okay so here we can return a div and within that div we will display total products by using the total numbers and let's return this component as the default okay now let's import this missing component that we just created so let me just remove the count for now and wait let's reload it so it is taking some time and it is now saying total products are 64 so currently we don't see the loading message yet because we added the same wait, uh, wait time period two seconds so both of these components loads at the same time so you can increase that wait period so maybe four seconds now let's reload it okay you can see loading count is now visible because first it loads and then it takes further two seconds to load this component so in this example we have nested suspense boundaries the outer boundary wraps the entire product section while the inner boundary specifically handles the product count this allows for more nuanced loading experience next let's discuss the error handling with the suspense suspense pairs well with the error boundaries for handling errors in the asynchronous operations so let's add error handling to our product list so in the product list component here i will check if math dot random is greater than 0 0.5 then throw new error with the message failed to fetch the products okay now here i will wrap this in the use function from the react make sure to import use 
from react in this way and now let's pass the fetch products into that function and this time we don't need async here now because we are not using a wait and here i'm going to add any okay everything else would stay same now let's create an error boundary component so in the components folder i will create a new file with the name error boundary dot tsx and now our fce would create a new component and actually we want to create a class here instead of function component so also this should be a client side component so make sure to add a use client on the top and now create a class error boundary extends react dot component okay and now we need to create a constructor that will be getting the props and within the constructor we are calling the super function and passing the props that we are getting from the parent and we are saving the object has error is equal to false in the this dot state and next i will create static get derived state from error and i will return has error to true now i will create a render function and within that i will check if this dot state dot has error then return to fix this error we have to add a generic type here like this and first we will pass empty object and then we will pass another object with a with a name that you want to add like has error boolean okay this way the error will be gone in other case if there is no error then i will simply return this dot props dot children so here i have passed any so it's better to provide props but for now i'm using any if you add do that this error will be gone now we have to export default error boundary so there is an error that we did not import the react yet so let's import it first and in the page.tsx in products folder let's wrap this suspense this suspense section with the error boundary make sure to use the correct path to import boundary so we have to use this component that we just created and here you can use the fallback as well here we can add a text with a div error loading products please try again later save it so this setup gracefully handles both loading state and potential errors in the asynchronous operations so let's try it you can see there is an error if you reload it sometime it works and sometime not because we have used the math.random so it will randomly throw errors to simulate the real world situation so in real world application there might be some errors so if you reload it again still working reload again so keep doing that you will randomly see the errors okay again this error has occurred actually here we should have used the fallback prop instead of using the custom message like this save it okay now you can see error loading products please try again this is coming from the parent from where we uh, have used the error boundary all right in this tutorial we have explored how to use suspense in nextjs to create more dynamic and responsive user interfaces we have covered the basics of suspense and its benefits setting up a nextjs project with suspense implementing suspense for asynchronous data fetching using nested suspense boundaries for granular loading states combining suspense with error boundaries for robust error handling suspense is a powerful tool that can significantly improve the user experience of your nextjs applications as you continue to work with suspense experiment with different loading states and error handling strategies to find what works best for your specific use cases remember the key to effective use of suspense is thinking about your application's loading states as a core part of your user interface design not just an afterthought i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to like and share this video also please subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for my upcoming videos and if you have any questions or feedback then please leave them in the comments section below thanks for watching this ayas tech tutorial Happy coding and see you in the next video.